Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's that time of year to start warming up the greenhouse and getting our plants moved out from inside the house and getting lots more plants sown in the greenhouse because the, because the season's really about to ramp up now. So come on, I'm going to heat my greenhouse and I'm going to show you how I do it for free. So these are the same pallets I use every year. They've still got a couple of years in them, so we'll keep them going as they are. And they've already got my bag stapled to it. And so I put a video on my Patreon, um, getting this greenhouse prepared for this grow bed. And it's time to get it done. That was a few weeks ago, and now it's time to get into some action. Oh yeah, yeah. So the good thing about this is it's the same pallets that I used before and they're already, all my materials already stapled in place so I don't have to do any real extra work apart from staple these side ones back on so come on, let's find some more stuff to use The frames that I've used before are completely rotten, so they're no good to use again. I thought I'd get away with it, but we're going to have to use something else. We're going to have to make them again. So the piece that I removed, I'm just going to attach it back on to give this little end a little bit of stability and just give it a little, yeah, just give it a little bit of strength. So just to give this, these pallets a little bit of longevity, I'm stapling some plastic in place. And this is just a, a ripped, you know, one ton builder's bag that I had lying around. And that'll do the trick for us. Oh, that's clever, isn't it? So I, sh I should have tied this side in place first because now I can't get inside. So I've just made my life a lot harder. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. No choice but to open up that side. And now I'll just duplicate my work. And I'm tying it quite deliberately because I want easy assembly and easy disassembly. So when I want to take this out, I can easily take it out again. Now there are ways of making this, um, these sorts of, pallet bins last a lot longer remember my aim is to make this as cheap as possible so i don't want to spend any money unless i have to and i want to use as much recycled material as i can so this is stuff that i had lying around already and it's good enough it's good enough so that's the bare skeleton of my hotbed ready and it's time to start filling it now. I mean ideally if I was going to make this I'd make it one meter squared so I'd use pallets on either side but because of the size that I've got that's why I use a smaller version of a pallet on the sides rather than a full one. So there we go that that's the inside of it. Let's start filling it now. So back to this big pile of wood chips because we're gonna need it now. So time to start filling. So I want a good thick layer of wood chip at the bottom. Get, make sure those wood chips are spread out nicely, nice and thick. We've got a good thick layer of wood chip on the bottom now. Now it's time to start chucking a load of manure in. So we're not exactly building this like a compost pile. It's not, we're not trying to balance carbon and nitrogen ratios. What we want is heat and we want prolonged heat for a long period of time. Oops, I dropped my bucket in. Oh, don't do that. We did a trip to the um, donkey sanctuary a few days ago and they have problems with getting rid of their manure. But for us, manure is precious 
So all of this, again, look, it's a problem for them at the donkey sanctuary. They can't get rid of it. We can't get hold of it. Perfect match. Yeah, so look for these relationships. And normally people go looking for manure that's just manure and not, you know, I, and what I mean by that is I don't mind getting manure with a lot of bedding in it because that's all going to break down. See, that's all going to break down and it's going to turn into real nice compost eventually. And because this is a slow process, we don't mind getting a bit of fresh manure as well. So, absolutely lovely. Bedding's not a problem for this process. Not at all. But I'll tell you what is a problem. Lifting these bags of manure and not getting yourself covered in it. So you can see how fresh some of it is. I've got this, I've got my bag trapped underneath. So, but make sure you get all your plastic out. There we go. Nice. I'm a big fan of using hotbeds. We've been using hotbeds for a very long time and had a lot of success with them. So here comes my little team bringing me down some more wood chips. Go and bring it straight in here. Do you want to tip it in? Yeah. Go on then. You do, the, you, you do the tipping. Nice. Well done. And I get to supervise for a change, which is nice. So we've got a good bit of wood chipping. Now, you might have noticed I'm not putting any water on. That's because these wood chips have just been sat out in the rain and where we're picking them up from, they're already quite wet. So we're not picking them from the centre of the pile where it's dry. We're picking them from where it, there's loads of water already on. So there's no need to soak this down. And there's loads and loads of water in the manure as, as well. So don't worry about this because it's so wet. If it wasn't wet, then I would give it a good water and make sure that it's properly soaked through and make sure that it's taken on a good amount of water before I start packing it up even more. There we go, get some more manure on. You can hear how sloppy that is. Oh, it stinks. Yeah, so there's a good amount of water already on that. Keep stacking up manure. Just keep filling it. This is quite an old technique. It's been very useful, especially in Britain. They've even managed to grow pineapples using this technique. So, um, so if you're in doubt about the amount of heat that it can generate, it can generate enough heat to grow tropical plants here in the UK. Come on. So, more manure. Oh, this is going to be some stinky stuff, but it's good. It's good. We'll have fun with this. I've said it once and I'm going to have to repeat myself again. Don't think of this as a conventional compost pile. So you're not trying to get your nitrogen ratio and your carbon ratio exact. What you want, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to generate heat. Okay, so my whole point of this is to generate as much heat for as long a period as possible. Okay. So in a cold climate, like our March, we've just had minus five degrees Celsius. So we need this to give us a bit of heat. So this is perfect for systems where you don't have access to electricity or where you don't have access to gas to power, you know, and heat your greenhouse. And the, the, the other main advantage is this is free. A little bit of labour, but it's not costing anything. We're in the home straight, nearly, not far. Oh, brilliant. 
just when I thought we were winning. Okay, carry him and you're like you're carrying a baby. There we go. Note to self, buy stronger bags next time. But these are old bags, they've been used a couple of times for this sort of thing anyway. But we're nearly there, we're nearly at the top. Now, what I've done in the past, what you'll have seen me do in the past, is when I've got to this level, I've filled, it, I've filled the rest of it up with compost. Now, I'm not going to do that this year, because what I want to do is, I want to generate heat for as long as possible. Now, within a couple of weeks, this is going to drop in height. As soon as it starts to settle, it's going to drop in height by at least six inches in a couple of weeks. In about a month's time, it'll have dropped in height to at least there. What I want to do when it, as soon as it drops in height, about six inches, eight inches, I'm going to come in and put a load more manure in just to get it firing again. By tomorrow, this will have heated up in no time and it'll start to heat my greenhouse. Now, when you're heating a large area like this, the key is not to have heat escape. Just like when you're heating your home, you can put in as much heat as you want, but if it's all escaping, you're not gonna have a, a great chance. So rather than trying to, because of the stage I'm at with the growing at the moment, I haven't got a lot of plants in the greenhouse. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be concentrating on plants in here. So I'm gonna make a little patch for this, drop that in, and I'm gonna cover this little area here rather than try and heat the whole place. Yeah, pretty much perfect. So that's just gonna go over the top. It's gonna to allow a little bit of light through and it's gonna allow that heat to stay in there. I don't want it to completely uh, be blocked off in there because I do want it to breathe. So we'll keep an eye on the temperatures and we'll monitor the temperatures, compare it to outside. We're normally about one degree warmer in here than we are outside. Now, if we can keep it to about four degrees warmer than we are outside, thanks to this, Four or five degrees is a reasonable temperature that we've managed to do before. Sometimes I've had two hot beds in here. Once um, this breaks down enough and we get to about June time, I'll be planting direct into here. So this is a great little trick. It's a great way of heating your greenhouse and creating a way of getting plants off to a good start nice and early. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. And if you like what you see, you can also support our channel by becoming a Patreon. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.